It should come as no surprise to learn that hunting horn players are a unique breed of their own. But to learn to join the ranks of the musically inclined, there's oddly only one phrase you need to know. Doot, doot. Welcome to the next episode of Bill a Better Hunter. Tied for last place with a lance in weapon popularity, the hunting horn is one of the most misunderstood and misused weapons in Iceborne. At first glance, with Capcom themselves describing it as a support weapon, it's easy to see why. Talk of madness is this! Most blunt damage attacks come out slowly, and even the heaviest hitting moves don't initially match the damage of the hammer's charged swings. Recitals for buffs require a bit of planning and safe positioning, especially if hunters want to encore for more powerful or longer-lasting effects. It also doesn't help that the hunting horn falls within the complex category of weapons in Monster Hunter's sandbox. With the bow guns, it's easy to just run and gun. Greatsword? Simply shoulder tackle anything and get to a true charge slash as fast as possible. Even an Unga Bunga Hammer Bro can successfully throw themselves at monsters at will, whether on the ground or flying through the air. But as a hunting horn player, you recognize the importance of bonking with finesse. Directional attacks and recitals allow hunters to conduct their own repeating battle dance of attacking, dodging, and repositioning. This continuous cycle is masterfully explained in detail by the wonderful Monster Hunter Philippines community channel, so check that video series out if you want to learn more. Whenever I look at any of the top hunting horn players, I see that they have a certain flow and finesse in their playstyle. It's as if the hunter dances around the monster gracefully and retaliates using attacks with great precision. Your musical duding can make or break a multiplayer hunt with a wide variety of buffs, like a 20% attack or defense boost, super health recovery, and even a speed boost for you and your fellow horns. Just don't forget to always equip Horn Maestro Level 2 for maximum buff up time, and to refresh them with recitals whenever you get an opening. Like with all videos in this Iceborne series, these builds often do not come cheap. So check out the link in the description to my Honey Hunter page to edit any set to your liking. Timestamps are also listed below, and unless otherwise noted, eat at least for Feline Groomer to more easily activate the Coalescence skill. The original Black Dragon slaps hard with his Fatalis Menace Wailer, styled in the form of a sinister bass guitar. As with most meta-focus builds, this set provides the four-piece Fatalis set bonus of extra health and stamina, as well as true razor sharp for free. Once combined with Arch-Tempered Velcana's leg piece and some extra handicraft skills, peak performance and purple sharpness will last for most of a hunt. This set also features maximum evade extender to make Hunting Horn's awkward evasion a bit less cumbersome. Easily avoid replaying specific buffs by spamming the All Melody Effects Extended Song, and instead rock out with both kinds of echo waves for extra damage in your recitals. Depending on the face button input with a recital, the tunes on Fatalis' horn shred like this. To focus more on knockouts with your hunting guitar, check out this alternate build that trades Evade Extender and Basic Attack Boost skills for Maximum Slugger and Evade Window instead. Overall damage is still high thanks to the combination of self-improvement and Attack Up XL melodies granting a 36% total attack boost. On this and the previous set, 100% affinity is guaranteed on tenderized and agitated weak spots, and Divine Blessing Level 5 keeps you alive for the times you may overcommit on fast monster attacks. Eat for Feline Slugger with this build to push KO damage even further. And remember that a recital actually deals more stun than a Super Pound. Oddly enough, Frostcraft actually works pretty well with the Hunting Horn, provided you change up your combat style. The damage multiplier falls off differently than on Hammer, decreasing from an initial 25% boost for two hits to 20% for another couple attacks, 
than to 5% on the last stage. The kicker here is that the only way to maximize Frostcraft's bonus is to focus on low frequency moves like Super Pounds, Reverse Pounds, and Echo Waves, as any multi-hit move like the spinning Echo Attack will quickly deplete the gauge. Though the Hunting Horn isn't very maneuverable in mid-air, aerial attacks combined with the airborne skill here do hit hard, and this set provides the easiest avenue to over 2,000 damage on a Triple Impact Echo Wave Encore wake-up hit. Rounding out the raw builds, Safi's Shatterhorn steps into the spotlight for a comfort build unlike any I've made before. With maximum earplugs and super recovery included in the horn's default song list, it frees up lots of decoration slots and also doesn't require Black Veil Valhazak's armor. Instead, the four-piece Fatalis and Arch-Tempered Velcana leg-piece combo allows for stacking on damage and comfort skills at the same time. You'll still get maximum Divine Blessing, Stun Resistance, and Flinch Free as usual, but also maximum Evade Extender, 100% affinity on tenderized and agitated weak spots, and even a speed boost from one of the horn's songs. This set lacks the usual Guts and Jumpmaster skills, but you can substitute out the Velcana legs for Seething Basilguses for those extra bonuses if desired. Make your encores hit harder by stocking up the Small Health Recovery Melody, which also helps to keep you and your fellow hunters topped off in a fight. All Safi Jiva horns share these three melody snippets from the Red Dragon depending on how you start your recitals. Opposed to previous weapons I have covered, Elemental Hunting Horn is actually capable of more damage than the typical Fatalis meta on good Elemental matchups. This is mostly due to moves like the Spinning Echo attack that hit multiple times quickly, as well as the Elemental Attack Boost and Elemental Effectiveness Up melodies that give a 20% combined Elemental bonus. Other helpful melodies also add utility in unique situations to reduce opposing Elemental damage or negate certain adverse ailments. The end goal of Head Smashing is of course the same either way, but the Elemental Route does have its advantages. All of these sets have 100% affinity on tenderized and agitated weak spots for the most Elemental damage possible. For Fire Element, you can't go wrong with Safi's Hellhorn comboed with Silver Rathalos' Alpha Armor for a true Critical Element playstyle. Coalescence isn't needed in this set since both the Element Boosting Melodies cap base Elemental Damage at 950. Instead, Peak Performance fills in to boost raw damage to keep up with the flames. Other useful melodies on this horn like Water and Dragon Resistance make it a great choice against Namiel and Alatreon, while the Speed Boost Melody allows you and other horn players to easily outspace most monster attacks without even evading. Slinger capacity level 5s included in this set for free, or extra flinch shots when needed. A well-balanced water element horn is hard to come by, but Safi's Aqua Horn doesn't disappoint when combined with Fatalis and Arch-Tempered Velcana's armor. Though raw damage could be pushed a bit higher with 4-piece Fatalis armor and Velcana's essence on the horn, too much water damage is lost to make it worth it. Any concerns about overall damage can be tossed aside, as a 15% raw boost comes from the Encore to Tack Up melody alone, and when Coalescence combines with the Elemental Effectiveness Up song, you will sport well over 1,000 base water attack. The Fire Resist melody makes this horn shine against Teostra and Silver Rathalos, while Impact Echo Waves and Slugger Level 3 guarantee more KOs and makes the Feline Slugger meal a bit more appealing to eat for. Thunder Element brings us to Kulv Taroth and her Kyarpite Myth that pushes elemental damage through the roof with Safi Jiva armor. Naturally high raw and a lot of white sharpness somewhat make up for the lack of any raw damage boosting melodies. But on the element side, almost 1400 thunder attack is achieved after the element boosting tunes mix with the coalescence activation. Give divine protection and super recovery to you and your fellow hunters with their corresponding songs as well. And the easy to spam small health recovery melody gives many recitals a health bonus on top of an already damaging attack. You may want to layer this and any other Kyar or Taroth horn with something else, as the recitals sound like this. Frostfang Berioth remains the king of ice weapons, and his Bringuiro hits all the right notes as well. Sharing all the same songs as the Aquahorn build, this set combines a slew of raw attack power and purple sharpness with over 1000 base ice attack after the elemental effectiveness up melody and a coalescence activation. The Fire Resist song also pairs well with this horn when matched up against Lunastra and Raging Bracadios.
while the situational Sonic Waves melody stops a digging Diablos in its tracks for punishing counterattacks. There's no room for handicraft in this build, so either avoid using the spinning echo attack too often, or just keep great wet fish fins handy to maintain that sweet, sweet purple sharpness. Taking cues from Monster Hunter Tri's Tundra theme, the Bringuiro's recitals are a nice touch. The last elemental build brings us back to the Blazing Black Dragon as expected with the Alatreon Revival. This mobile pipe organ mixes together high raw, a fat bar of purple sharpness, and over 1400 base dragon attack with coalescence and element boosting melodies. Slugger level 3 also fits in this build to boost KO potential, making dragon echo waves pull double duty as an extra stunning attack in addition to their elder seal potential. If you run out of Null Berries against Alatreon, the Blight Negated and Blight Resist tunes come in handy, and the Wind Pressure Negate song also makes Kushaladora a somewhat more enjoyable fight. Bits and pieces of Alatreon's theme are easy to hear on the Revival's three recitals as well. As a hammer that happens to play musical buffs, the Hunting Horn also always deals status damage in the form of KO or exhaust buildup. Throwing another status into the mix gives duders a bit more variety in a hunt, and can sometimes buff the status buildup of fellow hunters as well. I recommend eating for feline specialists on all these sets to give even more activations, and to bring along an apothecary mantle to push status to the max. Just as with the elemental builds, 100% affinity on tinderized and agitated weak spots on these sets will build up helpful ailments even faster. The Toxic Poison status again features Safijiva's Venom Horn, combined with Gold Rathian's armor. With this set, hunters get the usual high poison buildup, combined with extra affinity and damage from the Agitator skill, as well as Maximum Divine Blessing. The Awakened Abnormal Status Melody set also gives its own perks, as fellow hunters can enjoy more status buildup, extra divine protection, the negation of any ailment, and yes, even a speed boost as well to outrun many attacks. Peak performance is thrown in here too for a solid boost to raw damage output. Hulf Taroth is the go-to for sleep weapons, and her Taroth Pipe Sleep fits the bill as always. The base of this set comes from Amadeus 225, an excellent hunting horn speedrunner, but I've edited this version to strike a balance between high damage and status. All notable sleep buildup comes from critical hits here, since the melody set on this horn is more geared towards attacking. But for practicing triple impact echo wave wake-up hits, it doesn't get much better than this. Help out your entire hunting party by combining the recovery speed and extended health recovery melodies that will also keep your own peak performance skill activated most of the time. Zappy Jiva steals the show for Paralysis with his Bind Horn, and for all intents and purposes, this mirrors the Poison build almost entirely. A successful Paralysis proc opens up you and your hunting party to free hits, a break to heal, or to sharpen if needed. Either way, the same melodies as before help out other status weapons on your team and give you and fellow hunters more evasive abilities to skirt around danger. For both this and the Venom Horn set, the choice is yours to swap around decorations to instead run attack boost level 5 if you aren't comfortable with a peak performance playstyle without losing too much damage. For Blast, the Golden Elder Dragon returns with her Kyar Pipe Crusher, combined with the familiar Safi Jiva and Raging Bracadios mixed armor set. This build just about has it all, from high blast buildup thanks to built-in critical status, to great damage from the Attack Up XL song and damage boosting skills, a comfortable evasion window with damage mitigation from the Defense Up XL song, and even impact echo waves for easier part breaks. This build is about as all-purpose as it can get when hunting monsters. So bring it along for some explosive recitals wherever you choose to do. That's all the sets I have to share with you on this episode of Build a Better Hunter. The Hunting Horn takes a bit of time to get comfortable with, but remains quite a flexible and high damaging weapon when set up properly. The buffs 
heals, and melodious tunes make any who wield it a valued party member. And once positioning, roll canceling, and directional recital flourishes click into place, you'll know you've become one with the musical head smasher. Thanks as always for joining me for all these build guides. It's been a blast delving deeper into the weapons I know and love in Iceborne. That said, I do plan on continuing this series in Monster Hunter Rise, with the hopes of adding at least a couple more weapons into the mix. Please subscribe if you're new, and keep an eye on my community tab for channel updates, polls, and other posts to stay engaged with the growing community we've created together. Until next time, happy hunting! <laughs>